Hello everybody, my name is Edgar from TaxDome, and I want to welcome you to another TaxDome webinar, where we go over specific topics and discuss best practices. Today's topic is e-signatures, also known as electronic signatures. Now, with no further introduction, allow me to quickly run through the agenda for today. We're going to be talking about what exactly e-signatures are and how they work, why the audit trail for e-signatures is so important, how you can use e-signatures through TaxDome, and we're going to discuss what part e-signatures play in your workflow and see how you can save time by using e-signature templates. Now, to get started, believe it or not, to this day, there are still a lot of practices out there that have not yet adopted e-signatures and implemented them into their business. But nowadays, e-signing and electronic delivery of forms and documents is by far the fastest and easiest way to obtain a signature from clients. An electronic signature is a way to get approval on electronic documents. It can be in many forms and created by many technologies. It could be you clicking I agree on a website, signing with your finger on a mobile device, typing your name or PIN code into an online form, or simply using an e-signature solution like TaxDome. E-signatures, however, should definitely be captured appropriately by following some security measures and standards. And this leads me to talk about the audit trail. An audit trail captures and preserves information concerning the delivery and signing process for each document, and it can serve a vital role when the authenticity of an electronic signature is in dispute. And this type of historical data is sometimes called an audit log or a certificate of completion, but it doesn't really matter what you call it. It definitely enables your business to verify each signature and trace it back to the signer when it is necessary. An audit trail normally captures information such as the signer's full name, email address, the type of event that took place, the time, date, IP address, location, and operating system. Now let's talk about e-signatures in TaxDome. TaxDome e-signatures are legally binding for essentially every business or personal transactions since they comply with multiple electronic signature policies all around the world, like the e-sign act and UETA in the US. There are two different types of electronic signatures in TaxDome. The first one for our native contracts feature that firms in TaxDome can use to request signatures on engagement letters or proposals. And the second type of signature that works for all external PDFs. Let's first see what contracts look like in TaxDome. To send a new contract to a client, we'll click New on the top left. Then we'll select Contract. Select a contract template from your list. Select the client account that this contract is for. Add the services that your client will be signing for. And then make any necessary changes to your contract template. Don't forget you can use shortcodes in your contracts to add dynamic pieces of information to your contract templates. Enable reminders if necessary. And then click Send. Now let's see the client's perspective on signing a contract, an engagement letter, or proposal in TaxDome. The client will have to first log into the portal. Once in, they'll have to click the notification on the top of the page. They will then have to scroll down through the document until the very bottom of it, where they can find the signature field that they have to click, enter their name, agree to the terms, and then click Sign to complete the request. Now let me show you how easy it is to request an e-signature through TaxDome. To do that, I will quickly shift to my TaxDome firm portal that I will use to upload a sample document and send a request for a client to sign. To upload a new document, we'll click New on the top left. Click Document, find the document on your computer, and then click Open. Select the client that you will request a signature from. In this case, we're going to select Edgar Espinoza and then upload the document to a folder where your clients can see the documents, but they cannot make any changes. Hit Next. In this case, it isn't necessary to notify the client about the document upload, since the signature request will send a separate notification after we send it. Click Upload to confirm. Now we go to Documents. We find the document that we just uploaded, and then click the three dots on the right-hand side of the page. On the drop-down, click Request Signature. Here, we wait for Taxon to prepare the document, and then we start our signature request by selecting the signer on the drop-down. Then you can start dragging and dropping your signature field, date field, initials, and any other text field that you need your clients to fill in. In this case, we will name this field full name since this is what we want from the client. And you can add as many fields as you want all throughout the document. 
Once you are done with your fields, consider enabling reminders. These are automated notifications that your clients receive via email after a certain period of inactivity. In this case, they would receive one reminder after three days if they don't sign the document. If you need a KBA signature, toggle the option. These have a cost of $1 per signee on any PDF. When you're done preparing your document, click send. And now that the signature request was sent, let's see what signing a document looks like from the client's perspective. This here is the client portal. And as you can see, the clients always land on a to-do list. The notifications on their page do not go away until they complete their action items. All the clients have to do to sign a document is click the notification on the top and then start filling in the fields that the firm added during the signature request. The clients cannot complete a signature request if they don't fill out all the fields. The only field that they don't have to fill in is the date, since it populates automatically. And once they are done with all the fields, clicking finish is the last step. And that's it. It took less than a minute to fill in the fields and provide an e-signature as a client. And this here is the resulting document. Now let's take a quick look back at the firm portal and see this document's audit trail page. At this point, the firm would have already received the notification both via email and in the app. Meaning that if whoever was assigned to the client that provided a signature takes a look at their Inbox Plus page, they will find a notification saying that the document was just signed. All they gotta do is click the notification here, go to the document, and then click the three dots on the right hand side of the document view page to access the audit trail. You can also access the audit trail directly from the documents page on the client account by simply finding the document and then clicking the same three dots on the right hand side of the page. And if the firm accesses the audit trail page of a document, not only will they find the client activity on this document, but also the team members activity. This page is also where you would find a record of any KBA signatures provided on this document. Now let's go over one of the most common use cases for electronic signatures where we have to request a signature from more than just one individual. For example, taxpayer and spouse. Except this time we will use the TaxDome desktop application to print a document from our tax software right into TaxDome and then request a signature right after, all from the TaxDome desktop app. First, let's open the app and if you don't have it, you can download it from the TaxDome settings page. After logging into the app, TaxDome becomes a printer driver on the computer meaning that we can print from any software right into our client accounts and then request a signature in the app. Let's try it. Say I opened a form 8879 or a tax return on my tax software. All I have to do now is print the document and select TaxDome as a printer. And after I print, the document will be sent to the TaxDome desktop application. Here we have to follow the same steps that we did on the browser. Select the client that this document is for select the file location, and then toggle the option to request a signature. Prepare the document, except this time we will drag and drop fields for two individuals, taxpayer and spouse. They both will be signing the same document. However, they will have to log into TaxDome using their own separate emails. And once we click Upload Files, all signees will receive a notification both via email and in the app. Now let's go back to our presentation. Now let's move to the next part of this webinar, which is about how e-signatures take part in your workflow. Now your workflow may consist of many different steps of a process that may have different stages in it. Whether you're doing tax preparation, accounting, consulting, it doesn't really matter what service you offer, e-signatures are in almost all cases a very important piece within the process. To show you an example here, I will again shift to my TaxDome firm portal so you can see how e-signatures can have a very positive impact on my workflow if I use them properly. Now here we are back on my TaxDome portal, but this time we are in the workflow section where we are seeing one of my pipelines. In particular, this is a tax preparation pipeline. My pipeline consists of several different stages of the process. One of the stages is called e-signature. Within that stage, we have Edgar Espinoza being a job within the stage. Now remember that e-signature that we requested from Edgar Espinoza? Well, we can create a link to make that request a pending action item on this job 
so that it automatically moves from e-signature to e-file when we get the signature from the client. To do that, we click the job and then click link on the top right corner of the page. Click documents to find your document for signature and then click the checkbox. The changes will save automatically and all you gotta do is click back. Click back again to confirm. And then when Edgar Spinoza provides us with their electronic signature, we can refresh the page and the job will automatically move to the next stage of the process when the client provides the signature. That way, the next set of automation in the pipeline will also trigger. It could be a task telling one of our preparers to e-file the return, or it could also be an email saying thank you for providing your signature to the client. And that is, everyone, how e-signatures almost always take part in our processes. Now let's again go back to the presentation. And well, for the last part of this webinar, we'll see how you and your team can start saving time with e-signature templates. Now e-signature templates in Taxdome are used to pre-populate signature fields and date fields and really any field on your forms by just selecting an option from a drop-down menu. Thus, if you have a form that you request a signature on very frequently, Taxdom can help you save some time by allowing you to create a signature template so you can use every time you request the same signature on the same document for different clients. Now let's see how easy it could be to create these signature templates and use them every time you request a signature on the same form. The first step to create a new signature template is to go to your settings and then click templates on the top menu bar. Click the signatures sub tab and then here you have two options. You can either copy a template from the library or you can create a new template from scratch using your blank PDF. This time we will create a new template. Let's create a template for the form 8879 that we used earlier. We need to find a PDF on our computers. They follow a very similar process to just requesting a normal signature. And drag and drop the fields of all the signers required on the document. And because a form 8879 can have more than just one signer, I will click edit signers to add the signer number two, which normally would be the spouse. Then drag and drop the second signature field and then save the template. Now you might be wondering how do we use this template or how do we even define who is signer number one and signer number two on our client accounts? Well, that's actually very simple. All you have to do is go to the client profile that you want to request a signature from. I will open the Edgar Espinoza account and then go to the info tab of the client. On the right hand side of the page, you will find all the contacts that are linked to this profile. And on the top right corner of the page, we have the signing priority feature where we can define who in the account is the signer number one and signer number two. Of course, all according to how we formatted our templates. And so let's see what happens now if we upload a new document and then we use our signature template to send a signature request to this client. We'll follow the same steps to upload a new document and then request a signature on it. Except this time we're going to use this drop down to select our signature template. The signature fields will populate automatically as well as who needs to sign on each field. This feature along with printing documents directly into Taxdom will save you a few minutes each time you send a signature request. And if you do hundreds or thousands of signature requests every year, that will certainly add up to hours and hours of saved time. And that is all we had for you today folks. Thank you very much for watching this webinar.